I've been making surgical masks for about a week now. There are some really good tutorials online and there, a lot of them are probably better than mine. I did start by looking at those. I've adapted a little bit. I'm just going to go ahead and show you what I do because I've had a couple of people ask. So this is all you're going to need. You're going to have material. Um, this is my template for what size I want to cut the material so I don't have to do it from scratch every time. You're going to need elastic. Um, this is the optimal, 3 8 but you can't get it anymore. So this is a half inch, which you still might not be able to get, which I cut lengthwise down here along one of the strands. Twisty ties or pipe cleaners. This is a Chanel stick, which is a little bit fuzzy, so I have to cut that down. And uh, I have a chopstick, but you could use a pen. We'll see what that's for later on. So this is an adult mask. So I take my bolt of material and I fold it here. So when I say six by nine, it's six by nine when it's on the fold. If you didn't do it on the fold, you'd have to do two separate ones or else you'd have to do um, 12 by nine. So I put it on the fold of the material and then I lay it down and put it on the ironing board when I do it and lay it out and get it, make sure it's right. And if I have a long bolt, I put it on the ironing board because I found it's really helpful if I take an iron and then I iron this flat, which gives me a nice line for me to know what I'm doing next. And then of course I would cut off that edge. So what I've ended up with is folded a six by nine. So I take my material and I fold it in half so that I can see where the center is. So now I have my center. I put a pin in the center, but I don't catch the back of the material when I put that in because I want to unfold it. And I found I don't want to put all the way up to the edge because then it's going to be a little harder. So this is going to be the nose piece up here. And I want to take the twisty tie. I take a double twisty tie and I fold it in half. That just gives it a little more strength. So this is going to be the nose piece. And having that crease there helps. Then I can just put it up and slide the twisty tie in the middle there and place it where I want it. Then make sure that the edges match again. Sometimes you have to um, hold it upside down a little bit and pull it down so it's in the middle. Then once you get in the middle, I take the pin and I go right along the center of it. And then I don't want it to slide because I have it centered in the middle. So I will take a pin on either end of it and put it at a diagonal. Once I get that, I'm ready for my elastic. Sometimes I will put a pin right here just to keep the corners together for when I put the elastic because I want this to stay like this. So I take the elastic and here's one of the half inches that I've cut in half lengthwise. And you can see once in a while you have a strand sticking out there of the elastic and you can just pull that off but most of the time this is plenty strong this way. So I wanna keep it in line. I can fold this back. I find um, online they were doing it as they went. Uh, I find for me, it's easier to do it all at once. So you wanna put this in diagonally. You have your material with the right sides together. I have that there, I'm pinching it. Then I take my pin and I go in the material and up to near the corner and then I'm gonna lift the other side, but I wanna kind of keep it together so that the edges match where they're supposed to. Take this other piece, which is going to be shorter than the length of the material there. Put that up in the corner. And again, I match it. Make sure that that's down because the mask is going to be coming out this way, the strings to the mask. So then I put my other elastic there. Now what I want to do is I want to stretch it, see where the middle is, grab it because I want those edges to meet nicely. And I, the other thing that this does is it keeps the elastic from coming up here where you would sew it in the seam, which you do not want to do. So I would do the same thing on the other side. And um, at that point, I'd have it ready to sew. Here is one that I have done. Uh, that's ready to sew. So I've gotten the two sides, I've done that elastic on both sides, and then I wanna put one here in the middle, as you can see, to hold the bottom edge. This is going to be where the chin is. So now it's ready to sew. 
I want to put this pin where I want to stop when I come around it because I'm going to start on this side and I'm going to start not in the middle where I started in the middle when I first started and it was harder to pull it through so I start more toward one end probably about a third of the way down and when I start I'm going to back stitch um, so I don't have to tie it every time it'll secure itself so I put it in I think I want it a little bit put it in go back a little bit and then forward and then go to the corner making sure that the elastic is where I want it when I get near the elastic I want to make sure it gets a, a good bite on it if you don't have elastic I've seen people use shoelaces I've ordered some rickrack um, you could use seam binding you can be creative and you can make ties so you could even make it ties out of material now that I've got it sewed here, I just want to make positive that the elastic doesn't sneak in. So what you can do is make sure your needle is down. If you had to, you could lift it as long as the needle is down the material. The elastic is back, which this pin is helping to do, so that's good. So I'm going to hold it there and make sure it stays back. And then I'm going to go down the side. Now remember how I said that the elastic is shorter uh, than the length of this so you can see how it's bunching up here but as long as the needle is down in the material now I'm gonna let the pucker be back here because I'm gonna pull this straight now the pucker is back here but it doesn't matter because that's already sewed so now I can go down and making sure the elastics not in the way there Go to the corner, make sure it comes over the elastic, and turn it here. Now this is a side that has the um, the twisty tie in it, and this is where the twisty tied toe go starts. So that's going to be helpful for me. So now I'm going to go down, and I want to make sure I'm beyond the twisty tie because because on a few of them you can see it when you turn it right side out. So I'm going to go down to where it starts. Okay, so I'm at the beginning of the twisty tie here. Sorry, I just bumped the camera. And now I want to make sure that twisty tie is going to stay in the middle. In order to do that, I switch to about three on my zigzag just for a couple stitches. Once in a while, I forget, and then I have to go back over because I forgot to take it off the zigzag. One, two, you can do two, you can do maybe three. Now I take it off zigzag. It's kind of secured. I know where the middle is. I'm going to go down to the other end. Now I'm down near the other end, so I'm going to do the same thing. A little zigzag here. I'm going to take this one out and zigzag. And that should be enough to hold that twisty tie in. And now I can go to the other corner. Get down to where the pin is and back solid. And now I can just lift it up and cut off the tails and now it will be ready to be turned right side out. So now that I have it sewn, I need to get it right side out. This is secure in there. And I found that the easiest way to get it out is to take it, stick my finger. Now this is nice and wide, but some of them are only like an inch long. Uh, this one would be good. I'm thinking about leaving this seam open like this so that if someone in the healthcare, not necessarily for people that need to go outside with it that are home people, um, but for healthcare, they may wanna slip a filter in there. So if you do wanna slip a filter, just leave it wider. But I stick my finger in it. I go on the shorter edge that I had and I go down, feel with my finger for the elastic. Then I take the elastic and I can pull it through. This one's nice and wide, so it's easier. If it's uh, smaller, then you have to fight a little bit more. But once you get this first side through, then it's easy to get the second side. So now you wanna give this a good little tug, first of all, to make sure it's gonna hold well, and then to make sure it's all the way out. Now you will see why I 
just started using that. I'm trying to make sure it's laid. Now why I'm gonna use that chopstick because these seams will sometimes fold on themselves and then you lose some of the, the width and length of your mask. So I take that chopstick, you could use a pin, unopened of course, and that's my nose, so it's not gonna go in there, you, but you can see what it wants to do. Okay, so I go in here and I take my chopstick and I go along the seams on the top and along the seams on the side to get as much length and width as I can out of this mask. And usually at the point when I'm ready for that, to start doing this, I will have plugged the iron back in so that I can iron it. So now it's ready to be ironed. So you wanna make sure when you iron it, that you take this and make sure that it's tight there. And then you would iron it down here I make sure that these edges are exposed and as far out as they can, iron it there. You wanna make sure that this bottom edge here is in. And then when you iron that, that will help hold that in. Now, sometimes I've been sewing this shut by hand sewing if you don't wanna put a filter in it. So here's one that is already ironed and out flat. So here's the nose piece up here. Now I wanna make the side tucks. So I saw that one of the people online um, measured each one. I think that takes more time. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's gonna be folded anyway. It just has to fit the face and go over it. So don't feel like you have, have to have everything exactly right or perfect or it won't be good. So you go ahead and make a tuck in it there. Hold that tuck and then pin it. Take another one. What I try to do is this is gonna get pretty thick for, for folding in for sewing it when you go to sew it. So I try to make these folds not overlap with each other. If I do, my sewing machine is not gonna be very happy with me. So I make sure that they're a little bit apart like that. So I've made the next one. Put a pin in that one and a third one and what i'm doing is i'm making sure the folds go down away from the nose piece toward the chin that will help it curve under the chin i think and it will also keep any debris it helps debris fall down instead of uh, collecting in the folds so now i have this one folded and I can kind of eye it, eyeball it for the other side. So I'm gonna do it about, I look where this one is, and I do it about the same. And if you have any doubt, you can pull it like this and you can see how it's gonna lay. So I think this looks pretty good. If it wasn't quite the same, you'd see that fold would look a little bit different. So this is, this is close enough. Sometimes I readjust it some. Then I'm gonna take the next fold, look to see how far it is here, do about the same, pull it to see how it's meeting, and that fold looks pretty good, so I'm gonna do that one too. And then for the third one, look at the bottom on the other side, see how much I have down here, so I want about the same amount there, and pull it, and that looks pretty good too. It really wouldn't matter if they weren't exactly the same. You just get better as you keep doing them and you keep figuring things out. This is the final step for it. Now we're going to sew the tucks in so they hold. And sometimes uh, the sewing machine doesn't like it too much. Again, I'm going to try to back sew on myself, but I want to start on the edge here because I want to be able to cut it off at the end and not have the tag sticking out somewhere. And so I'm going to go back, forward, back, and then forward again. And then sometimes you have to help this across. You have to help turn the wheel if it's not going to go. It's cooperating right now. This 100% uh, cotton, which is what they recommend, seems to do well. So that side's done. Make sure you cut off the tags. Take out the pins and test it. Yep, it's in there. 
and do the same thing on this and then your mask will be finished. So there's your mask, the finished product.